Welcome to our G80 M3 oil service DIY. I'm Chris and I want to walk you through really how easy an oil service is on this car because you already paid a pretty penny for the car so you can at least save a little money and do the service right and do it yourself knowing that it happened correctly. We're using OW30 Genuine BMW oil. We of course have a replacement filter and just make note of this locating dowel with O-ring. The filter is only going to go in one way when we're in there and everything is packaged really tight so you're going to want to make note of it now. We have a 3 8 inch drive torque wrench. We're gonna set this to 25 Newton meters. That'll be our oil filter housing cap as well as our drain plug bolt. You're gonna need a 17 millimeter socket to go with that for the drain plug. You're gonna need a 32 millimeter oil filter housing socket. And this one is a bit of a specialty tool and I do recommend you buy it. We of course offer one through Schwaben. We then have our 3 8 flex head ratchet, 3 8 extension, quarter inch drive ratchet, and on here we have an E6 inverted Torx. So we're gonna use this on our coolant reservoir as we have to loosen that and move it out of the way to get to the oil filter housing cap. And then just to make lives easier to pick off some O-rings, a flathead screwdriver. Some things that are gonna make this job a little bit easier, you know, a little bit better quality of life is the Schwaben pad. I also have some Schwaben work gloves. Of course, plenty of towels and brake cleaner. And then because this is a very beautiful brand new car, I have the paint protector that just goes over the fender and hangs there. It keeps my belt buckle from scratching anything up. All right, so to get started, we're just gonna pop the hood. It's actually just a double pull of your hood pop. So you do once, get a bell, and then do twice. And now it's fully released and we should be able to lift it. Magic. To get access to our oil filter housing, we have to move a few things out of the way first. There's a wiring harness that comes up over the intake manifold, and then we have to unbolt the coolant expansion tank and move that to the side to get access to the oil filter housing. This is what I was talking about with the tight BMW packaging. To move the coolant expansion tank, you'll need your E6 inverted Torx, and to move the wiring harness, just your finger. Getting started under hood, I've laid out my fender protector, and we're just gonna loosen the oil filter cap. That will prevent any vacuum from keeping oil from draining out as we do the rest of the process. And also serves as a reminder that you gotta put oil in your car before you try and start it. Here's the wiring loom we're gonna move off the intake manifold to get access to the oil filter housing. Super easy to do, just pull this tab and lift up. That's now loose, and you just set it aside. Next up is the coolant expansion tank. We're gonna use these E6 inverted Torx, take that up and move this out of the way. Now it's gonna be hard to see, but our oil filter, the housing for it is straight through this hole we've just opened up. So way down in here is our oil filter housing. And this is where we use our 32 millimeter Schwaben oil filter socket and our 3 8 drive ratchet. Got a couple of other towels here just to pick up some dribbles. Now that we've loosened that with the socket, I'm gonna finish the rest by hand. Just hold the reservoir out of the way to give you some access. Now it's all the way loose and I'm gonna pull it up I'm gonna have my secondary set of towels here ready to go to catch the dribbles. Did I mention how the packaging on this car is tight? The new filter goes in, note the orientation of everything, and this is just a little pressure clip that holds it into the filter housing, so we should just be able to pull that right off. There you go, out with the old, in with the new. New filter comes with that new O-ring. So we take the housing, don't overcomplicate it, simple flathead screwdriver, pop that out. Gently massage it out, you don't wanna crack your plastic housing. The new one's gonna go on in its place. We wanna get just a little bit of oil on the ring. So from my slot bucket here, just lubing the ring up. So there's a little bit of oil residue on there and it helps everything seat as we screw it down 
into the housing. There we go. New ring on. We talked about how that oil filter has that locating dowel and you'll see in frame here, there's just that little extra hole in the housing right there. We have to feed our filter in first before we tighten anything down so that that locating dowel on the filter goes into that hole and then we tighten the cap down. It's important that you locate that so you don't break it off. Same as the big O-ring, just put a little bit of waste oil on that little locating dowel O-ring before you feed it in. Just helps locate everything inside that housing. So you notice the dowel here is located on the left-hand side of the filter. I'm gonna feed everything in that way. Did I mention how tight everything is packaged in here yet? I feel like that's a theme. There you go, you'll feel it go right in. Should have no resistance. And then I'm gonna hand tighten it. And then we'll come back with that Schwaben 32 millimeter socket and tighten it to 25 Newton meters. If you forget that, it's also written on the oil filter housing when you take it off. Set your torque wrench to 25 Newton meters. And here we go. Listen for the click. It's gonna take a couple of extra turns than you think because we're tightening up against that O-ring. Do you see how quick the wrench stopped? Now the cap is all the way closed, and so we should hear our click. And one more for good measure. There we go. Done up there. Don't leave your little spill rag. A couple drops, not too bad. And then we'll reconnect our reservoir, our hose, and our wiring harness. Relocate the hose into the reservoir. Has a clip, factory clip that holds it in place. And locate the reservoir on the intake manifold. And especially when I deal with these plastic intake manifolds, I like to start everything by hand. Perfect. See how easy it's screwing in? That means we're in the same factory holes, the same factory thread. We'll go ahead and tighten it with our quarter inch ratchet. We're ratcheting this into plastic, so be sure you don't come in here with your half inch drive impact or something silly. This is definitely a hand tool job. Putting the harness on is the same as taking it off, just in reverse. Offer up the clip to the harness and press it down. You will hear an audible click. If you don't hear an audible click, you're on the either side of that little locating clip. So be sure to listen for that noise. This is our special ECS tuning jack pad adapter. On the bottom side, on the corners, you have two plastic receiving blocks that are shaped as the inverse of this little hockey puck with the Lego brick on top. You're gonna push that up in there and it's going to lock in and then we'll put the jack, we'll put the jack underneath the pad and lift everything up. And that just makes sure we don't crush anything, especially on this car. You may be used to jacking on pinch welds for other cars. This car has the nice body kit from BMW so you don't wanna mar anything up. So it'll be jack pad into the receiver, jack under that, and then we'll lift everything up. So as you can see here, I got just a little bit of tension now on the jack pad and I can fit my hand between the jack and the side skirt here. So we're just gonna protect the paint as we jack the car up. Okay, under the car, we have our jack stands in place for safety. I have one on the rear jack point. It's the same style jack pad as we have up front. And then I have one on the front cross member. Underneath here, we're gonna take off this black disc and it's keyed. So we're just gonna twist it to the left and you'll see how it comes out of the keyway. Just like that. Those tabs locate it and then you twist it on. Super easy. Our drain plug here is 17 mil. Now, can I be faster than the oil? Let's find out. For the record, I'm never faster than the oil. For that reason, be prepared with a couple of rags. Oh, 
Oh, that was terrible. Good thing this isn't a race. We'll let that drain out. And if you recall, up top, we loosened the oil cap on the motor. That's so that while this is draining, we don't have any vacuum sucking up. Like if you've ever tried to pour a two liter of Coke out really, really fast and it just bubbles back up, having that cap open up top ensures that this all drains freely. So we'll let that drain for a few minutes. All right, we're down to just a couple little drips coming out. So we go ahead and put the drain plug with new crush washer on. And then tighten with our 17 mil to 25 Newton meters. To put our plastic disc back up, you can see how these tabs will locate it. It goes into the hole and righty tighty. It actually says on the lid, close with an arrow to the right and open with an arrow to the left. But righty tighty, lefty loosey, same thing works. We're done underneath the car, so now we go up top to fill it up. The fluid capacity on this oil change is seven liters. I'm gonna put six and a half in, and then we'll check and see where we're at. So we've got about six and a half liters of oil in the car now. The full service calls for seven, but I wanna take it out, warm it up, and then we'll read it on the MMI since we don't have a dipstick in this car, and we'll get an appropriate oil level to know if we need to add any additional oil. So we've gone around the block and we got the engine up to temperature. The temperature needle is sitting right at 210 now, right in the middle. To check our oil level, we're gonna go back into the MMI and go to car, vehicle status, engine oil level. And now you'll see the engine oil measurement is a function that we can click. It gives you a reminder to leave it in park or neutral. And then we're gonna start the measurement. This will take a minute. You'll hear the engine come up to rev as it pumps everything through, and then it'll give us a virtual dipstick on the screen. Okay, so the engine oil calculation has completed, and you can see we're just at the max. Uh, so I don't want to add any more oil. I'm glad I started with six and a half liters and took the measurement before we just dumped all seven liters in. There's a little bit left on the dipstick. I'm sure it would have been okay, but as an example, there you go. Okay, that's it for this pretty straightforward DIY. We'll link to all the products and tools in the description so that you can go ahead and purchase and do on your own M3 competition and get out there and hoon your car with the rest of us. Enjoy. Oh shit, that happened. <laughs>